If you have your Bibles, turn with me to 1 John. 1 John. I want to give a devotion, short devotion, not 30 minutes. <laughs> Hope is coming. Hope is coming. First, I mean John, St. John chapter 1. And uh, let me go ahead and give you the outline. Number one, hope is light. Hope is light. And by the way, when I say hope is coming, Jesus is our hope, folks. He is our hope. Hope is light. Hope is the Lamb of God, number two. And hope is coming again. Is coming again. In John chapter 1 verse 6 there was a man sent from God whose name was John this man came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all through him might believe he was not that light but he was sent to bear witness of that light and that light was the true light which gives light to every man coming into the world and I even touched on it uh, you know, in our sermon uh, this past Sunday, you know, the, you know, Elizabeth and her pregnancy and Mary and her pregnancy and uh, John the Baptist, uh, Elizabeth was uh, barren and, and God brought forth John the Baptist out of that. And, uh, you know, there were people, even if you read further down there, that they thought he could possibly be the Messiah and he vehemently told them, no, this, I am not the Messiah. And we all know that John the Baptist was a forerunner of Jesus Christ. And what he was trying to say there, it's not me, it's not about me, it's about the light. And notice the word that really sticks out in my mind in there, the true light. Folks, I am telling you, we live in a dark world, a dark world. And everyone needs to see the light of Jesus. And I'm telling you, that's just, even at Christmas time especially, okay, you know, uh, uh, Randy Byers uh, gave me their manger scene. And, uh, you know, I've just, I, I've always wanted one. You know, I saw the plastic ones, and I'm not knocking anything else, but this one looks more authentic. And one of the things I was, after the first night I put that light up and put that out there, I said, there's something missing. And it was a star. So I sent Lori to the store and said, find me a star. And she says, what do you mean? And she says, I want a star over uh, the manger scene. And folks, Jesus is that light. That, that star, you know, guided them. And folks, the application there is, folks, we are the light. We are the light. Jesus is the light, the true light. But our light shall shine. And, and you know, Matthew 5, you know what it says there. So hope is light. Now, hope is not just light. Hope is the Lamb of God. Look down in verse 29. Down in verse 29. Hope is the Lamb of God. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Folks, everybody knew what lambs were for in the Old Testament. They were sacrificed for sins. They were sacrificed for the sins of the people. And John was saying, yes, Jesus is the light, but he's not only the light, he is the Lamb. And it, it says, and when you think about lamb too, folks, it's a perfect lamb, a perfect lamb, the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Verse 30, this is he whom I said, come after me comes a man who is preferred before me, for he was before me. And what he's saying is, man, I'm way down the line. If, if you look back up in verse 17, it is he who or 27, excuse me, 27, it is he who uh, coming after me is preferred before me, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to loosen. So what is Jesus say? What is John saying about Jesus? Listen, I can't hold a light to him, all right? I can't carry his shoes, all right? He is the Lamb of God 
in the Lamb of God is that hope uh, that we know uh, for sure about. Verse 31, it said, I, I did not know him, but that he should be revealed to Israel. Therefore, I came baptizing with water. And we know the ministry of John the Baptist started before uh, the ministry, the public ministry of Jesus. And we know John was out in the country. He was a country boy, all right? Ate locusts and honey and, and hung around. And he's probably the holler. You know, I picture him as a holler. He just hollered, you know, repent, repent. You can see as you read that. But he was simply saying, I'm just telling you, I'm talking about the Lamb of God. In verse 32, and John bore witness saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, <coughs> and he remained upon him. What is John talking about? His baptism, folks. His baptism. When that dove came down, it was a picture, it was a literal picture of the Holy Spirit. And he says, I did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, upon whom you see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And we know that happened on the day of Pentecost as far as to the first church and the church. But we say at that baptism, that's where the Holy Spirit shined in Jesus' life. What was his power, folks? It was the Holy Spirit. How was those miracles done? Through the Holy Spirit. Even though him and his father is one, that father is one, that's the Trinity there. And folks, I am telling you, Jesus is hope and Jesus is the Lamb of God. And this I have seen and testified that this is the Son of God. Folks, I still get amazed at if somehow we could just go back to those times and just seeing Jesus baptized or seeing one of those miracles, I mean, just the miracle of Lazarus after being dead for four days. Folks, I am telling you, he is the perfect Lamb of God. And the last thing, turn to Revelation 19 with me. Hope is light, hope is the Lamb, and hope is coming again. And we know uh, chronologically, we know all that is going on. What has happened in this scripture before us uh, was the second half of the tribulation period. All these things, these, uh, you know, bowls and judgments and all these things have taken place. And then in Revelation uh, 19, uh, verse 11, this is at the end of the tribulation period. Now I saw heaven open and behold a white horse. A white horse and he who sat on him was called faithful and true and we know this is Jesus Christ and in righteousness he judges and makes war see before he was a man of peace before he was man of peace he was a lamb a gentle lamb but when it starts coming when it comes to this part of Revelation folks I am telling you he is that lion of Judah all right, and you'll see what I'm saying here. Look at, look at this description. His eyes were like flames of fire, which uh, indicate judgment. On his head was many crowns, which means supreme ruler. He had a name written that no one knew except him. You could only be guessing. I'm not even going to try to guess what the name is, but we will know that name. He was clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And folks, we know that Word is the living Word out of his mouth. I'm telling you, he will destroy people through speaking. He ha doesn't have to use a sword. He will do it uh, if you read all the way through here. Verse 14, and the armies in heaven, clothed in fine linen and white clean, followed him on the white horses. I think the two groups there are the saints that are in heaven at this particular time and all the myriad of angels. Uh, and I hope you can picture this in your mind. Now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword and that sword is to destroy the enemy, to destroy them. And that with it he should strike the nations and he himself will rule with a rod of iron. And a rod of iron basically means no mercy. Okay, he has given everybody 
chance after chance after chance, and I'm telling you, he will come back and destroy all evil. And it says, he himself treads the winepress of the fearness and the wrath of Almighty God. Folks, it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a mighty God. And during that time, that battle of Armageddon, the Bible tells us the blood will run up to the top of the horses. And he has on his robe and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Oh, folks, we will be part of that. And I know even this Christmas season, we need to be that hope for people this Christmas season. I talked to a lady today, and uh, I don't want to get into new, too many details about it, but she was just so downtrodden. She was so distraught with the way the world is and what is going on in her whole family, and tears were just falling down her eyes today. And we got to visit, it, and I kept telling her, listen, it's not always going to be like this. I believe the next thing, folks, on God's prophetic calendar is the rapture of the church. And we're going to, we're out of here. We are out of here. And folks, it's not one of those things, well, I hope so. Let me tell you what I believe. I know so. I know Jesus is coming again. I know he's going to take us out of all this mess. But even until then, folks, the hope is not in Washington, D.C., folks. The, the hope is in Jesus Christ, our Lord. And we need to keep following him. We need to keep sharing this hope. We need to keep telling people about Jesus. We need to keep giving our testimony. We don't need to fall into that hopelessness of society in a lost world. Our hope goes way beyond the grave. Way beyond the grave. Folks, our hope is in Jesus Christ. Father, thank you. Thank you, thank you for this day. And God, we just thank you for the hope. And God, I thank you for our body life. I know it was long, but there's just so much we need to do. And God, I thank you that we are united in one accord. I thank you, Lord, to be able to transfer that much money, God. It is, it is you, God. Your hand is upon our church, and we praise you and we thank you. God, we rejoice with you. God, we love you. God, thank you so much uh, for the Christmas season. God, I pray in these next 10 days that we will tell people about the hope, that we will stop, uh, we will make a phone call, we will check on people and just encourage them in the faith and tell them about the hope uh, that is in our lives and the hope that they can have uh, with Jesus. So God, just be with us as we leave this place and God, just watch over us in a special way. Uh, God, I pray for all these on the prayer list. Uh, we just lift them up to you. And God, I just pray that you would continue to do work uh, in these lives and the surgeries that are coming up, uh, the COVID patients, those who are quarantined. Uh, Lord, all that's going on, Lord, just be with them in a special way. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.